I will wait a moment for everybody to catch attention. Okay, great. As I heard previously when I watched a TED talk, a bit of silence, there's nothing wrong with it. So my name is Mikoai Makosh, and I got a story to tell. My childhood dream was to become a footballer. Ever since my first coach moved me to a better club, football was my whole life. I watched football YouTube channels, I read footballer biographies, and I basically played football all the time. I was fully into my passion. Even the friends that I had, most of them were playing in the club with me. As we shared similar values and we spent time together, I felt like I grew, both as a person and as a footballer. After some time, club's community decided to move me to a better group because I was so good, right? <laughs> so as I met my new teammates, I realized that my new coach was the same guy that used to train me in my first football club. And you might predict what happened next. Due to my high ego, I had this urge to prove him that all the work devoted by him towards my development did not go for nothing. As I struggled to play the best as I could, you know what happened? That's actually the time when I started playing worse. As I felt like I disappointed him with every training session I started to attend, I started to hesitate whether it was all worth the effort. At some point, I decided to stop playing football. As I go back to this decision, I'm not proud of it. Football was my passion, which I abandoned. I felt like I disappointed everybody around me, including myself. So I want to share the story with you that actually made me the person no longer scared, scared of failure. This exact experience that I am going to share with you made me the person of courage, which I am today. So it all happened three years ago. That was the time when I already, you know, stopped playing football. And that was also the time of hope, since I met new people, since that was my first year in high school. I met my peers, but it was only one week until we were closed again in our online schooling. So basically, we had no contact with each other. After a few months, I was coming back from Easter vacation with my parents, and I had this urge to meet my friends again and to play football professionally. However, I knew my skills would not allow me to do so. So I've been thinking for a while, what could be the alternative for my problem? And you know what I thought about? That was a crazy idea. Why wouldn't I, myself, create a football tournament for four Varsovian schools? Well, just to let you know, I had no knowledge on how to do this. I had no experience and I had no budget. But where's the will? There's a way, right? So I started organizing it in April for it to take place in June. So I had basically two months for preparation. I've written to many schools that I knew, and some of them even responded. They were like, wow, Mikoy, that's a great idea. We can offer financial support. But that was only to withdraw later. Some of them, the schools, did not even bother to respond to my question. So as I knew my budget was tight, I was looking for the cheapest possible stadium that I could rent. So there were people who actually helped me, like my dad, who was taking the pictures of the game, like my PE teacher, who worked as the referee, uh, however, it did not stop for the obstacles to come in my way. As I invited four schools to the tournament, only three of them came to the event. However, I don't want to be only negative or pessimistic. There were some things that I'm actually proud of. For example, the attendance of both fans and players. But you know, they were asking silly questions all the time, like, Mikowai, where are the seats for the fans? I said, sorry, we were short on the budget. Players were like, Mikowai, where are the referees? I said, sorry, we were short on the budget. And both players and fans were like, Mikowai, where is the fourth team? You promised fourth teams. Sorry, we were short on the budget, right? That was the basic response. So basically, that was not the tournament of my dreams, right? However, I achieved my goal. People integrated, and I created a tournament. However, if I were to compare my vision with how it actually looked like, that would be a complete failure. So nobody aims to fail. That's why failure will always be a touching experience. It depends from the factors which are hard to control. For example, our emotional involvement or the magnitude of the failure. However, there are some factors that we do can control. For example, our mindset. Because our thoughts play essential role when it comes to perceiving reality around us. So as I was organizing the tournament, I asked myself three completely wrong questions, which actually empowered my fear. Firstly, I asked myself what people would think of me. I wanted my friends to like the event. And being honest with you guys, even to be impressed by it. I asked myself, 
Is it all worth the effort? I did not know whether the time spent on the event would actually pay off. The only way I could get to know that was by trying. Another question, very common question that I asked myself was, what if I fail? I did not know what could happen if, for example, one of the teams would not come to the event. Of course, now I know, but then I didn't. I also asked myself, wouldn't I forget about any significance on my way? That was my main concern. So as I org started organizing the second edition, I asked myself completely new, refreshed questions, which actually empowered me and not increased my fear over failure. So instead of asking myself, what are others going to think of me? I asked, what do I think about myself? Although people around us can be a source of inspiration, what they think should not be a decisive factor. So the second question that I asked instead of, is it all worth the effort, was why did I even start? This question helped me to focus directly on my goal rather than obstacles. Instead of asking myself, what if I fail? I asked, what if I succeed? Because that was also the option. This question helped me to focus on what could go well rather than what could go wrong. So I started organizing the second edition in September, way earlier. Secondly, I collaborated with my friend Julia. She was football passionate a graphic designer and social media manager. Very hardworking person, perfect to collaborate with. Thirdly, I started to plan. I created a cost estimate. I created the budget. I have written over 200 emails to different companies in various industries asking for sponsorship, even a sausage producer. So despite the fact I worked really hard two months before the tournament, I had no money because the similar case to the schools, the companies did not respond. So I was wondering whether the tournament would even take place. But you know what, the guys? Something amazing happened. A fashion brand, like a massive fashion brand, maybe not massive, but very, very famous in Warsaw, responded to my request that they have written over five months ago. And they offered financial support, they offered merchandising for the tournament, and they offered prizes for the winners. And that was the exact moment when pieces started falling into the right place. I've managed to organize the tournament for eight Varsovian schools with over 180 participants of only players. Even though the storm was forecasted a day before the tournament, everything went just fine. So guys, as I know, the first step always takes the courage. I would like to give you a daily tutorial on how you can overcome fear over failure. You will only need three things. Pen, notebook, and a bit of systematic work. So every day from now on, before you go to bed, I would like you to answer those four questions. Firstly, what risk did you take today? Maybe you talked to a person that you were always afraid of. No matter the scale of the risk, you should always find that one daily risk that you took. Secondly, how did you feel before taking the risk? Maybe you were calm or maybe you were stressed. Thirdly, how did you feel after risk taking? Maybe the pressure decreased. And lastly, what lesson did you learn from your experience, from your risk? As you're going to evaluate the lesson that you've learned from your risk taking, you will see the real value of taking it. After some time, your fear will be gone. It will be changed into pure motivation. So guys, remind yourself of times when you were really scared of taking a risk, where you thought that would overcome you. Think about it from the current perspective. Was it really that scary? Where would you be if not this risk that you'd taken a time ago? So guys, if you would ever again feel the fear of failure, think about how courageous you may become. Think about the knowledge and experience you may gain. And most importantly, think about the success you may have. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a pleasure and wish you all a risky life.